everyone, and welcome to Broadway's Calling, where we talk to your favorite Broadway stars about where they were when they first got the call to be on Broadway, which is coming back, y'all. It was supposed to come back in September, but now there are like shows even coming back in August. Um, I think um, it's uh, something at the that transferred from Lincoln Center, Passover, that's coming. Um, that's going to be exciting. And I, I think uh, Hades Town is starting September 2nd. So Broadway is coming back. So we have to like keep our social distancing and keep our mask on to make sure that this really happens. Well, this story of finding our Broadway stars and hearing their story, it only happens once. And we are here to make sure we get that story. And today, I'm going to get the story of Drama Desk winner, Mary Testa. Yes, she is a veteran of not one, not two. We're talking 12 Broadway shows, including the Tony Award winning revival of Oklahoma. Now, that revival, she starred as Ann Eller, and she garnered her third Tony nomination. There she is, all right, doing a two-step, a square dance on a do -si do Well, she also did a fantastic job in the musical version of Xanadu. And comedy fans and Stephen Sondheim fans know her from a funny thing happened on the way to the forum starring Nathan Lane and also her good friend, Whoopi Goldberg. And Here's a clip, and I just, I don't know how Mark Lynn Baker from Perfect Strangers, you'll know how he kept a straight face with Mary Testa during this number. Comedy tonight, indeed. We're going to have a very fun time tonight. And that was Mary Testa. And funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Uh, and that was Mark Lynn Baker in her bosom. Now, we're going to try and mention all 12 of Mary Tessa's Broadway shows, uh, but some, because we don't have uh, time to do them all, some are going to be just a quick pick others with a nod and some with videos uh, such as you just saw there. Um, and for you out there, why don't you just keep tabs and count how many shows of hers that were actually able to get into just one episode. Can we do it? 
Can we do it? I think we can. We're going to try. Now, um, if you hear about a show and you want to, and you want more info about that show, um, and I don't ask the, ask the question that you want to hear from Mary, be sure to write that in the comments section. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can write it there. And if you're on YouTube Live, which we're always on YouTube Live, and you're watching the show after our, uh, our live presentation, you can also write it underneath the video. Uh, it's always fun to like uh, read the comments. I love it because there's going to be some zaniness tonight. Uh, we're going to hear some standards and maybe even a heartbreaking ballad. Uh, but I'm really, really excited for you here to join me to see Mary Testa, Broadway veteran. Um, Mary has also, she's no stranger to television and film. And a lot of people probably are saying, wait a minute, I recognize that voice. I recognize that face. Uh, she lent her comic chops to the marvelous Mrs. Maisel recently. After your kick out of office, I told you today to get out of that. Well, I I Virginia. Peter never listens to her. Now look at the mess she's in. Not only here, man. I'm bartenders. Do you really think it's getting angry will work? One of these writers just give her a boyfriend or a gun. My God, so hostile I'm today. I'm sorry, I'm just a wreck right now. Everything's falling apart. Hold it. That's the best way to reduce commercial. Eat oh. plenty or starve yourself. A half empty. Okay. Miriam stopped wearing her wedding ring. Oh, we're gonna need the ball. And Joel moved in with that girlfriend. The secretary. The home wrecker. Like Sasha from Edge of Night, always spreading in the room. She's a nothing. I know it won't last. If the secretary were just out of the picture, Joel would come back. You want her out of the picture? I have cousins. They have skills. I'm sorry? Nothing. I'm looking at the ball. I see a <laughs> I'm looking at the ball. <laughs> I love that scene. I really, well, I love Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So it was so fun to see Mary on there. It's always fun to see all of the Broadway people. And I have to say, when Maisel comes back this season, you may see a familiar Broadway face on the show. Um, that's not a spoiler alert. I'm not telling you what's going to happen, but it is in the very first episode. Um, Mary, as I said, has been all over television and film, but she really did something fascinating during the pandemic because on uh, TikTok, which just sort of exploded during the pandemic, uh, there was this one girl who thought it would be sort of cool to make Ratatouille into a musical. And so she started a song, and then next thing you knew, someone else added a song, and man, it was like, it exploded. Even Kevin Chamberlain uh, from Suzical uh, wrote a song, and he um, added that to the little thread that they had on TikTok well, someone got the brilliant idea to make Ratatouille into a full length musical and they fleshed it out. And our dear Mary Testa was cast in it as the chef. And here's a little taste of Mary as the chef at Ratatouille the musical. Just a teaser, y'all. Um, the full-length musical was put out and it was done as a benefit. And I think they raised over a million dollars uh, for the Actors Fund and the Actors Fund still is collecting money. They, they gave out like so much money uh, last year. And so they're still collecting money and they're still putting out great product. I know Eric McCormack, who was a, uh, a guest on our show also did a play. Um, and so it's just like, there's great things over at the Actors Fund. So I hope that you will look over there, see if there's something you want to watch and donate. But if you are a huge fan of Broadway, and most of you are, if you're watching this show, and you're not already a part of our Broadway's Calling family, I would love it if you could just subscribe here on the YouTube. Um, and then, of course, we want you to click that bell. And uh, the click that bell song would have to be because we have a great Beltris on the show. Click that bell. Click that bell. Click. Click that bell. Ethel Merman has nothing to worry about. 
I will never take away her Beltris title or Mary Testa. <laughs> now, something special that a lot of uh, friends of Mary Testa and fans of Mary Testa know that she just had her birthday on Friday and I promised her that we would celebrate all weekend. Um, so please be sure to wish her a happy birthday in the chat when she drops by. And uh, she will be here moment momentarily. Um, she's actually walking her pooch right now, Clyde. And uh, this is Clyde's walking time. And then she's going to join us, but it's going to be very <laughs> exciting. I cannot wait. Um, but speaking of birthdays, one of our biggest supporters, and it's her birthday today. And I think she's watching the nights out there in, uh, um, on the West Coast. But Rhonda Kramer, thank you, Rhonda Kramer, for all your support poured and buying our Broadway's calling pin. I love it. Uh, happy birthday, Rhonda. Now we are a live show and anything can happen. Um, we don't know, but our tech producer, Julie Garnier is, is here to help us out of any jam we get into. Hi. Hey, you're here. I was like, oh my God, she's not coming. Uh <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> well, I love your like uh, Broadway's calling disco shiny backdrop. I like that. I know, that. right? That's I found really this one this week. I was like, "Ooh, that's fun." <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's really beautiful. It's like I think a lot of people out in the world are like finding cool backdrops, you know, for their the calls of their families and work and everything. And um, it's really it's good for us, and it gives us something different to play with and something for you all out there to see with something different. Um, I even try to change my little, my little uh, looks over here. Um, still in the apartment. I have gotten out. <laughs> Julie, I didn't tell you that. I actually went out for ice cream yesterday. So that was a big step. That's a huge step for him, you guys. If, if you don't know, <laughs> that's a really big step for Lance Roberts, I have to say. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I also say uh, that I'm also just, just a, this is a, the smoothest transition you'll ever feel. Um, <laughs> I'm extremely bowled over by how many shows Mary Testa has appeared in on Broadway. I cannot wait to say hi to her. I've been a huge fan for a long time and I'm super pumped that she's here. It's exciting. Well, well she's almost here. She'll be here right after she takes her walk with Clyde. Yep. Yep, Clyde. Yes, you know, everybody knows it. If, if you know, you've heard of Clyde. People have heard Clyde on other shows that Mary has been on, uh, but it is her four-legged friend. And and actually, when she was telling me, I'm like, oh, I have to, I'll take Clyde out at the top of the show, and then I'll, I'll come join you guys. It got me thinking about Broadway Barks. Oh, I love Broadway Barks. That's uh, Bernadette Peters' charity that she started with Mary Tyler Moore. Uh, and, and they just had a yearly their yearly event last week. It was virtual still, uh, mm -hmm. but it sort of made me wish that I had a pup. Yeah, I know. My my pepper is a is a rescue dog as well, and has been the most incredible incredible companion during pandemic because I do live alone, mm -hmm. and so to have her around has been just you know such a joy. Oh, I bet. And and I think Andrea was a little inspired uh, by you having a dog and, you know, people like adopting uh, dogs. And she added a new member to her family. And um, I know she's probably like whipping up something in the Broadway Bites kitchen. But Andrea, if you could hear me, uh, I would love if you would join us and introduce us to your pandemic pooch. Are you there? <laughs> oh, hi. Yes, I there am. You are. Hi. Huh, I was just trying to get Jax to scurry over here. Let me see if he's ready for her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on, Jax. Oh, oh I can't wait to goodness. see Jax. Oh, here he is. Oh, man. Hello. And now that's Jax, J-A-X? J-A-X-X. -X. Yep. Oh, X-X. Oh, -X. I, I kept it with the double X. And even though the vet keeps calling him Jax, J-A-C-K, but it's okay. <laughs> That sounds almost the same. <laughs> well, Julie, where's Pepper? I think she's under my foot. I'm just trying to find her. <laughs> she's around here. So she's really little. She's only eight pounds, so she kind of <laughs> gets in the little corners and places. Pepper! Uh, I'll find oh, her. She's around goodness. here somewhere. <laughs> so now, so Julie, what were the actual benefits of having a pet during the pandemic? 
Um, hold on, I'm gonna grab her because she's right here. Oof, come here, sweet pea. Oof, there she is. <laughs> Here's Pepper. Um, you know, just I mean, just the, you'll see. She's she's a love bug, so just the kisses. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. <laughs> Oh man, I love it. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's the best. And, you know, she, she got me out of the house. I think that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. Because mm -hmm. when you, you know, when you're a responsible dog owner, you take your dog out for a few walks a day, like right. like Mary, you know, was doing and mm -hmm. um, replied. And so it's it just got me out of the house. Otherwise, I think I would have been a hermit and stayed inside the entire time. But to get outside for some fresh air and stretch the legs, you know, it it not only helps you. Um, physically, but also helps you mentally. I think, especially during this this time, it's it mm -hmm. was a great relief to know oh, that, I, like, oh, I got a dog, got to get outside. Right, you right, know? right. That's yeah. what I needed. I needed a dog during the pandemic dog. just to yeah. get me out. You know, um, I would look out my window and I would see people walking their dogs, and I was like, they almost it almost made life seem normal during those mm -hmm. 16 months you know just seeing people walk down the street they had their mask on but the dogs were just happy and just moving through time and space and it was fantastic um when andrea when you got your dog i was a little jealous i was like <laughs> that is like the, <laughs> the perfect dog and it andy so Skirna says pepper is precious uh congratulations fur mommies uh yes pepper is precious uh, hey, cousin Eugene. Um, <laughs> he says, "Would that be your first dog? Have you ever had a dog?" Well, I'm just gonna. I'll tell a story. That is my cousin Eugene. We call him Tommy in our family. Uh, but um, I actually, he gave me my first dog. I don't know if he remembers. It was a little Chihuahua named Cindy, and um, Cindy was a great dog. Uh, she would just curl up on my bed. But if I would toss in my bed and move the covers one iota, she would look at me and go, Arr. I was like, what? <laughs> this is my bed, Cindy. <laughs> like, so thank you, Gene, for reminding me about that dog story. Um, and uh, I'm trying to see if there are other dog parents on here. Well, Rose Taylor says Ratatouille was her fave, which mm. that has that's a pet. So. It's okay. I'm going to bring that up. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, looking here, um, Andy Skernet also says, Wolf Jax, welcome to the family. Thank you. Nancy Hoffman Gerber. Oh my God, I love Nancy Hoffman. Um, says, beautiful for babies. Um, Fantastic, you guys. This is so exciting. I knew this was something new and, uh, you know, to bring the dogs on because we've never really had the dogs on and they're so important in our lives. Uh, but Andrea, I wanted you to tell us about the adoption process. Of so, you know, they always say third time's a charm. Mm -hmm. I We were turned down three times. So oh. now I say the fourth time is forever. So really? uh, I guess there was, a, you know, during the pandemic, people were very active in adopting dogs. Mm -hmm. So even though I was doing a search and they were saying there's 1200 pets around your area mm -hmm. ready for adoption, I felt like everyone that I was saying, here's my app, you know, application, please review mm -hmm. it. I'd go, it'd come back to me and it'd be like, nope, sorry, it's been oh. adopted. And I almost gave up. I did. I said, maybe it's just not time. Mm -hmm. I'll let it, chill, let it simmer for a little bit. And then the email came up again saying that Jax was still available. And I was like, there's no way. How could he still be available, uh, right? Uh -huh. So I immediately fired off an email and the uh, foster parent said, Jax is still available. Oh, just waiting. And so I filled out paper and I have to tell you, there must've been like five or six sheets of paperwork to adopt him. Mm -hmm. And uh, it all went through smoothly and they came over and they do the, you know, the visual and the inspection of all mm -hmm. your home and like a little interview. And it, it, he was so happy. The minute he got to the backyard, he was just like, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I'm like, he's not going back. He's staying. <laughs> <laughs> he's staying. Well, he seems very at home, as does Pepper. Now, Pepper is also a rescue dog, correct, Julie? Yeah. So Pepper... Pepper came into my life because uh, I'd been looking for about a month at various foundations and rescues and could not mm -hmm. find a dog that I connected with. Mm -hmm. um, she's my first. And um, one day I was having lunch with a friend and I was going to meet another friend after lunch and we were going to drive all the way down to Orange County. I'm in Los Angeles, so about an hour away mm -hmm. to a big 
pet adoption uh, fair that they were having down there with 17 agencies. Mm -hmm. And as I was having lunch with my friend, Lisa, Lisa Reich, she's a Broadway producer. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, Lisa. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she's invested in a lot of Broadway shows. And she and I were sitting at Swingers in uh, West Hollywood. And she said, you know, there's this really great pet store down the street over by the Beverly, uh, by the um, Grove. And it's called it's called Barks and Bitches. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and they they have they've piled up with uh, with an adoption foundation and they have dogs running around the whole store. So you want to just go over there and check and see if there's one that you'd like. And so I called Danny and I said, hey, um, you know, meet, meet me at Barks and Bitches. So we walk in and when we walked in, Danny was sitting on the floor uh, cross legged and Pepper at five months old. She's 11 now. But at five months old, she was Wait, sitting 11 in 11 years or 11 months. She's 11 years old now. Oh, so wow. I've, I've had her for 10 and a half years. Wow. She was five months old. She was sitting in his lap and he just kind of looked up at me and he goes, this is your girl. This is it. And that was it. And it was literally like love at first sight. I sat on the floor next to him. She crawled out of his lap and into mine. And that was it. Like we've mm. been inseparable. The only place she hasn't been to with me is Australia. When I, ha I had to, I got a gig in Australia for a month and I had to go to Australia for a month to work. Mm. But other than that, she came to Gander with me when I was on tour with Come From Away uh, a year and a half ago. She did the entire year with me on the road. Wow. Um, she is a very, very well-traveled puppy. <laughs> well, I love that. And I I had just read on the, that you guys have to remember, this was all started because of Mary Tessa, who is on her way over to the studio. Um, and uh, this was started because she was had to walk her dog, Clyde. And it started me uh, thinking about Broadway Barks. And then I went on their website and I noticed Broadway Barks, they were talking about shelter dogs also help children with communication problems. And, and they even suggested like children to read to the dogs um, to gain confidence. Um, and it, it helps them to overcome their insecurities. And I, I just think that's fantastic how Broadway Barks mm -hmm has assisted in placing thousands of pets in so many loving homes and uh that's through uh volunteers and celebrities alike and i almost you guys i mean i was looking at all the pictures on the website i was like i'm gonna get a dog i'm gonna get a dog for sunday but uh i just want to say and and i've heard this before and they also say this at broadway barks is that you want to make sure that your life is going to fit with the dog you don't want to just you know get a dog like you know when 101 dalmatians came out everyone wanted to get a dalmatian but they're they're very specific dogs and they're particular and you have to have the right home for that. And um, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait to see what our lives are going to be like when we get back to work and doing our shows in September and make sure that a dog really, uh, we, I fit into the dog's lives, you know, so uh, that we have a great time together. But for any of you out there, if you want to get a puppy, you're ready and you're interested and you wanna adopt a pet, I really suggest that you go to broadwaybarks.com and find out all the information on how to do it. Um, and uh, Andrea's been through it, Julie's been through it, and you'll see that Mary is a puppy mom as well with Clyde. And I, I just, I just think it's such a great thing, you know, to, uh, to save these dogs. And I know Julie with Pepper, Pepper was five months, and about to be euthanized uh, when Julie, you know, got Pepper. So it's- I mean, who, who would not want this face on planet Earth? I know. Come on, people. Go get yourself yeah. a Pepper. Go get yeah. yourself a Pepper. <laughs> Go get a Pepper. <laughs> you know what? Having Jax brings a wonderful energy in the house and in our family. And I almost, I hate to say this, but it, it kind of brought us even closer. Because wow. now we're all responsible for Jax. Like, is mm -hmm. he been dead? Has he been out? Is he okay? You know, so it's kind of nice to have another person to look after. Mm -hmm. And when he just chills with you, like when he was just laying down right next to me, and you just feel this wonderful presence and like oh. calmness. So I could see why it's therapeutic because I feel therapeutic. Like when he hugs me, mm -hmm. I feel that. I feel like my heart just kind of calms down a bit. So it's been it's been a blessing. Someone I, I read somewhere, they said, I want someone to love me like my dog loves me. 
I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so just put out, you know, their food in a nice little silver bowl and they will, you know. <laughs> that's I don't have a, that's why I don't have a boyfriend right now. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, yeah. right? Not. <laughs> yeah. I need to find someone who's going to love me as much as Pepper does. <laughs> that's right. I'm sure there will be. And I'm sure a lot of you out there, um, if any of you um, have pictures of your dogs, uh, please send them to our website. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll like, we'll put them on the website. That'd be so good. Um, um, our website is broadwayscallingtv.com. And um, if you send pictures, we'll put them up. We'll put them on the Instagram. Um, but that's our website right there on the bottom, broadwayscallingtv.com. Uh, so send in your pictures. We'd love to see uh, you and your pooches. Uh, you can dress them up as Broadway stars. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> or one of, of Mary Tessa's 12 Broadway shows. Um, but before Mary comes out here, um, Andrea, I know that you were probably in your kitchen because I see you have your Broadway bites. Um, your yep. Broadway's calling uh, apron on. Uh, did you tie in a recipe with one of Mary's shows? Can you guess? Uh, let me see. Did you make something green for her Madame Marble and Wicked? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, my turn, my turn. Um, Chicago style pizza for when she played Mama Morton. Mm, uh, nope, but yummy. <laughs> Wait, I know. You made homemade animal crackers for when she was in Barnum. <laughs> oh, no, but what a great flashback photo, though. What oh, an wait. idea. <laughs> no, see, that would have been great. Okay, well then, how about the chili and cornbread that they served during intermission at the Revival of Oklahoma? Mm, nope, but also yum. Ah. Oh. So my recipe today was inspired by, let's see if I can. <gasps> what is that? Z what, Xanadu. 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 It's a oh plate. my God. Wait, wait, wait a I minute. Know, <laughs> I can't sing it. So somebody's got to sing along with me. Come on. Xanadu. Xanadu. <laughs> um, I actually posted uh, uh, Mary Testa. It's on my page today, and it should be on the Broadway's Calling page. Mary Testa and Jackie Hoffman uh, singing Evil Woman. <laughs> That's what they did. So, well, Andrea, why don't you put on your Olivia, Olivia Newton John roller skates and skate on over to the kitchen? I am. I'm then, on my way. All right. <laughs> well, while she goes, let's let's guess to see what she's going to make. Let's see. Uh, what do you think she's going to make? Well, it's Xanadu, so that means it's Greek. Yeah. Right? Or <gasps> oh, Saganaki. Saganaki. Oh, it's my favorite. Please tell me she's making Saganaki. Saganaki, isn't that like cheese and booze and yeah, fire? It's, it's cheese. It's a big block of cheese that they pour brandy on and then they set it on fire. No, she can't do that. The last time she like had bananas flambe, she had to get the extinguisher. No, the Andrea and fire, not a good thing. Uh-uh, no. I don't okay, think that's something see. else Greek. Uh, mm -hmm. Is Wait, ouzo? Is that Greek? No, that's not it's, a recipe. It's alcohol. It's Greek alcohol, yeah. Um, Maybe something with ouzo in it? I don't ooh, know. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. She's pretty healthy, so. Spanakopita. Oh, now you're talking. The little triangular French things with the. With, um, the, with, with feta and uh, lemon the, and spinach. Oh, so good. So good. That's no, horrible. but um, let's, let's see. Let's see what she, you know, I think let's, why don't we cut to the Broadway Bites kitchen and see what exactly she's going to toss All up for right. us. All right. <laughs> Oh, fancy lady. Check these out. Oh, look at you. You got your Xanadu rolls. Oh my God, they have the wings on them and everything. Wait, are they from the movie or something or the show? What? No, but they sure look like it. And I bet these were Kira's, right? Don't they look like it? I know. You look like Kira. <laughs> I like her. What have you got going here, Andrea? So what we have here is a Greek yogurt smoothie and it's super easy and it's got a banana. So it's like a medium sized banana, just throw it in there. Some almond milk, 
Mm -hmm. And two thirds cup of frozen blueberries. Whoop, a little, little too frozen. There we go. They're keep, the, I keep getting ordering frozen blueberries because I'm trying to trick myself into thinking I'm eating sorbet. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> good. Yeah, they actually taste good frozen, right? Yeah. And some Greek yogurt. Um, I use the non-fat yogurt. Okay. It's got a lot of protein and you don't need any of the extra fat actually. And for added protein, I love using PB2, which is a powdered peanut butter. So it's really high in protein and lower in fat, and it'll just get you through the day because you've got the protein from the Greek yogurt and then the peanut butter. So we're just going to throw that in there. Don't forget your ice. And I like quite a bit of ice, so at least about a half a cup. So there's two tablespoons, I'm sorry, of the peanut butter and about half a cup, maybe a little bit more of ice. Okay, easy. Just throw it on the blender. It might get loud. A lot of people like to use frozen bananas as well. Um, I opted not to this time, but you can, and it just saves a lot of time too, especially if your bananas are getting a little old. So it just kind of helps out a little bit and it keeps the fruit cold as well. So. Andrea, Andrea, can you hear me? We are off, yes. Andrea, so this just in, while you prepare that and make it all pretty, we're going to switch because we have Mary Testa in the studio Yay! and then we'll come back to you with the beautiful presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, Broadway's calling Mary Testa. Hello. Hi, Mary. How are you? I've been back since 6.05. I've been listening to all of this. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I just, I just, I, in fact, I saw a text and it was like, Mary's in the studio. I was like, <laughs> what? What? We're making no, it's, it's too hot out. My dog doesn't want to stay out. It's too hot. <laughs> so the walk was very fast. Oh, my goodness. That's hysterical. We have like, well, you've seen it all. I was like showing all of your clips from so many shows. <laughs> we were. I have to correct you on something. Oh, I, I came can't in wait. when you were talking about Ratatouille. Yeah. And Ratatouille actually raised over $2 million for the <gasps> Atlas Fund. Oh, my goodness. And is still raising money. That is the best correction because I said only, yeah. I, I just said over a million, but two million, you yeah. guys, it's so yeah. amazing. So like, I just want people, you know, if they find it, because I know you can find things these days. I think it's on YouTube. It on is YouTube. on YouTube, but I think people yeah. should still like send a dollar or two to the Actors oh, yeah, Fund, absolutely. you know, because absolutely. it's just very, very important. Well, welcome, welcome to Thank the Thank you. Thank you for asking me to come on. I didn't plug in my headphones because I'm still only at 20%. All right. Well, we can hear you and everyone out there okay. can hear you. And um, just I, I've shown so much of your career already, but it's better to hear it from you. Um, <laughs> I mean, you've like had this like 40 year Broadway career and um, and, you know, we've seen of the things that you're well known for. But where were you when you first got the call to be on Broadway? Uh, my first Broadway show was Barnum. Yes. And I actually was working on uh, March of the Falsettos because I had done In Trousers, William Finn's In Trousers. Mm -hmm. And the second part of In Trousers was March of the Falsettos. So I was in a workshop mm -hmm. doing March of the Falsettos when my friend forced me, kind of forced me. My friend was a production assistant on the show. They were 
two weeks away from opening and mm -hmm. they were hiring swings and understudies. And she made me go there on a Saturday and audition. I, I really didn't have any interest, <laughs> but um, the, I ended up, it's a long story, but I ended up getting the job and I had to leave March of the Falsettos and it wow. was very painful. And it was my first art versus, um, commerce sort yeah. of conundrum and um and bill didn't talk to me for a year but everything turned out to be the way it was supposed to be so yeah you know were you the original trainer what i mean no no i was miss goldberg and in trousers and my character was carried over into march of the falsettos and then when i left a bunch of people came in and did it and then my character was completely written out which she should have been so wow. it was fortuitous but not without a very painful, like, oh my God, I really would rather be working on this, but we were making $75 a week. And at the time, uh, my swing chorus contract was gonna pay me $400 a week. This is 1980. Yeah. And so I was like, I have to go with this Broadway show. So it was a difficult decision, but I ended up playing every role i swung six tracks and mm -hmm. understudied the only black woman in the show <laughs> very white i ended up going on for everything many many times so it was, oh my god uh, I, yeah well our our paths have like almost uh uh crisscrossed um i actually became a the first replacement in march of the fall settles for wizard in 1981, ah. when Stephen Bogardus had to go do like Leonard Bernstein's Mass, I fin finished out their run at Playwrights Horizons. Oh wow! Um, so I was I was that close to Mrs. Goldberg. That close. I, know. I even had I know. sunglasses like your Mrs. Goldberg. <laughs> I know, I know. But, it was uh, yeah. It's just so, funny how things work out, you know. Now you, there's a story because <laughs> I was thinking, um, uh, like when I did Annie, I was. Oliver Warbucks, and in the mansion, the set that came with the, the, the production at the Ordway, there was a large portrait of Oliver Warbucks, who was a Caucasian dude, and then <laughs> I show up, and I yeah. think, the, didn't a similar thing happen to you with yep. Terry White? There was a big banner. There was a, the, one of the roles it, uh, was the oldest woman, uh, Joyce Heth, yeah. the oldest woman in the world, and it was like a circus thing, and she'd, she'd ride in on a truck, basically, uh -huh. And there was a big banner and it had her face on it like this. And of course it was a, a black face, right? Yeah. And so the audience was always like, what? Whenever, and I went on a lot, so <laughs> that was pretty funny. Well, you know, hey, it's like, it, they say we have to suspend our belief and it's like, it's acting. So, you it's know. It's the theater. It's the theater, you know. So <laughs> you had mentioned uh, Bill who, uh, for those of you out there, is William Fenn. Uh, and you have had like such great artistic like endeavors with uh, Bill Fenn in Trousers mm -hmm. and, uh, and also The New Brain at Lincoln mm -hmm. Center. But also yeah. you've had a great um, collaboration with another great composer, John Michael Le Lequisa? No. Le Michael John Lacusa. Lacusa. Yeah. Every time yeah. it's like, I'm like, okay, I can say it, I can say it. <laughs> Lacusa. And it's but Michael it was, John, not John Michael. Oh, Michael John, of course. Um, and uh, see, it's like, he probably like has people like mess up his name all the time. And I think they do, the last name especially, I think they do. It's like, we have to get it better. You know, like Michael John Lacusa. Michael John yeah. Lacusa. I've said it now in front of you, so now I know You've I You've got it like, now, yes. Lance, you've got it now. <laughs> you know, but uh, but you guys had the First Lady Suite, Queen of the Mist, uh, First Daughter Suite, um, just so so many great collaborations. Marie Christine, Marie Christine. Oh, yes. I mean, so many things, um, but yeah, it's like all these, all these different roles that like I've caught. Oh, there you are, that, not you, but- uh, Sorry, That's Audra. <laughs> and um, that's Audra. Anthony and Anthony Cravello. Um, yeah. who's been on the yes. show. Um, but every time I see you in these shows, the choices are so damn strong. And as yeah, an actor, you. do you like come in? Do you like, oh, I know, oh, that's you in Queen of the Mist, uh, yeah. the first woman who went over uh, Niagara Falls in a barrel and lived. 
Um, of her own design. Yes. Of her it, own design. It was just mm -hmm. such a spectacular story. Um, and uh, But I always wanted to know that because, you know, from drama to comedy to farce, I mean, you've done it all, that do you come in with strong choices or do you wait for the director or the composer to, to give you No, I, you know, I... <sighs> I, I really enjoy collaborating. I'm so hot. Yeah, and no. I, really I, I have my, I really I'm like. Enjoy, I know, I'm sweating. <laughs> I really enjoy collaborating with people that I really love to work with. Mm -hmm. And so in the instance of, of uh, Michael John or people that I enjoy, like Daniel Fish, the director of Oklahoma, yeah. it's a collaborative effort. You know, the director's always in charge, but it's a collaborative effort. And I just do what I feel is right for me, you know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not a shy person and I'm not afraid to give an opinion. So, <laughs> you know, uh, whatever, you know, if, if I'm hired, I, I'm expected that I will be respected and listened to. And so that's what it is. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to make a bold choice. And it's good. And they're all bold and they're all exciting. There is uh, there is a clip of you because like I love props. And um, I, I love watching uh, performers with props because I don't think I'm that great at props, but I just love when when people are great. And there's a clip of you uh, singing a Rodgers and Hart tune to keep my love alive. And oh yeah, how, from how, the Boston Pops concert. Oh my god! Like at, at least 15 years ago, I don't even remember when it was. With Audra and the beautiful Rebecca Luker, oh. the now angel Rebecca Luker. So, well, I wanted to show people, you know, how good you are with props <laughs> and at, at a great lyric. This is Mary Testa, To Keep My Love Alive. <laughs> the bride I never divorced them I hadn't the heart yet remember these sweet words till death do us part I married many men a ton of them and yet I was untrue to none of them because I bumped off every one of them to keep my love alive. Sir Paul was frail, he looked a wreck to me. At night he was a horse's neck to me. So I performed an appendectomy to keep my love alive. Sir Thomas had insomnia, he couldn't sleep at night. I bought a little arsenic. He's sleeping now. All right. <laughs> Sir Philip played the harp. I cussed the thing. I crowned him with his harp to bust the thing. And now he plays where harps are just the thing to keep my love alive. To keep my love alive. I thought Sir George had possibilities. But his flirtations made me ill at ease. And when I'm ill at ease, I kill at ease to keep my love alive. Sir Charles came from a sanatorium and yelled for drinks in my emporium. I mixed one drink, he's in memoriam, to keep my love alive. Sir Francis was a singing bird, a nightingale. That's why I tossed him off my balcony to see if he could fly. Sir Athelstane indulged in fratricide. He killed his dad, and that was patricide. One night I stabbed him by my matricide to keep my love alive, to keep my love alive. <laughs> I never noticed you look like Margot Channing a little bit in All About Eve. Ah! <laughs> that Just... was um, the director of that concert was Warren Carlyle. 
and oh. got, and the knife was his idea. And so, um, it, but it was delightful. I really enjoyed doing it. Oh my goodness. Well, he's very creative. And uh, if most people, I, I hope everyone saw the phenomenal uh, Hello Dolly and he did that choreography and it was just so fantastic. And I think he's about to direct and choreograph something in the new season. Um, I'm sure he is. Yeah, he's just so, so good. Um, I wanted to bring um, Andrea back because I'm sure she's done with her Greek um, Xanadu inspired. Her Xanadu smoothie. float. Her Xanadu <laughs> smoothie. It's here, kids. <laughs> oh my goodness, that looks so yummy. It's now, really Andrea. Good. Now, I can't remember if Andrea, you saw Xanadu or you said that was the one that you were trying to see. I did see it. I saw it twice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, a I, lot of people saw that show multiple times. <laughs> It was hilarious. I have to say, when you were conjuring up the evilness to get Kira back, the first time I saw it, I think I laughed so hard. I couldn't even understand half the things that were going on with your dialogue. Right? I was like, ah! you know, the whole time. <laughs> we had so much fun. It was an interesting show because when we were in rehearsal, I mean, people really um, put it down. You know, they were like, are you still doing that Xanadu? Oh. Like, everybody thought it was going to be really awful. And so... Um, we were very happy that it was successful and, and I thought it was hilarious and it really walked a beautiful line. It had a lot of heart to it and it was mm -hmm. so much fun to do. You know, that's the, uh, that's the uh, intermissionless show. That was uh, like an hour and a half long. It's like, it's the actor's gift. Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love oh. it. I love doing it. And it had a great script by Douglas Carter Bean. Right. Uh, directed by Christopher Ashley, which was uh, Julie's director for Come From Away. Uh, yes. Great pedigree. And then you and Jackie Hoffman. Oh, my goodness. Great, Just great group of people. Hilarious. Harry Tony Butler Roberts and, and Carrie Butler, yes. Cheyenne Jackson, Jackson. Yep. Curtis, uh, Kanita Miller, An Anika, uh, Anika Larson, um, Andre Ward. Oh. Uh, Curtis Holbrook, um, who else? Uh, just great people, great people. Such I just wanted to break in for one moment and talk about Cheyenne Jackson's thighs uh, in that show. Okay, ladies, calm poor, down. Poor I have a photo Cheyenne. of Cheyenne in, that, in his shorts, in his worst <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, I'm out. No, You're out. <laughs> he's so handsome. He's so, He sings like an angel. He's hilarious. He's got it all. He's doing really well. And now he has two kids. Yeah, and he's very, very nice, too. He's like a nice yeah. person. He's just a yeah, genuinely so. nice person. Um, I think he's on My Own Bialik's new uh, series. Yes, he is. And I think he just shot, just judging from what I see on Instagram, um, I think he just shot a movie somewhere in Europe. But, oh, um, yeah, he's gotta, doing great. Gotta yeah. love it. Gotta love it. I well, love thank it. you, Andrea, oh. for yes, stopping. Thank you, Andrea, for that gorgeous drink. You're welcome. Yes. I, I want that right now to cool me <laughs> off. Um, it, it's like, you know, but uh, uh, Mary, you had mentioned uh, Rebecca Luker, you know, who we lost to ALS. And I mm -hmm. think her, her husband, uh, Danny, just posted that it was Lou Gehrig's day uh, last week. Um, was it? And, oh, my goodness. Yeah. So that's, it's so lovely. But when you mentioned that, we have a video of you, of uh, you and Rebecca singing a little with Audra McDonald singing a yes. little of Sing for Your Supper. And you guys, yes. I would love to share this with you. That was that same you. concert. That was that same Boston Pops concert. <clears throat> well, here's a little of it for you all to enjoy. Sing for your supper and you'll get breakfast. Songbirds always eat if their song is sweet to hear. Sing and you get dinner, dine with wine of choice If romance is in your voice I heard from a wise canary trilling Makes you willing, so little swallow, swallow now Now is the time to sing for your supper And you'll get breakfast, songbirds are not dumb They don't buy a pro Songbirds always eat. If 
Oh, bravo. If you guys are enjoying wow, these videos of Mary Testa, and that was Audra McDonald <laughs> and the late Le Re Rebecca Luca singing Sing for Your Supper, share the video, share it everywhere. You know, we want people to really celebrate these great uh, Broadway performers and their great stories. Oh. Um, and if you just joined us, you'll have to rewind to hear. Mary's story of when she first got the call to be on Broadway uh, and the, the big sacrifice that she had to make artistically. Uh, Mary, um, as a New York actor, of mm -hmm. course, you have been on Law & Order, right? Once. Once, of course. A long time ago, Law & Order proper, yes. I love it. So that makes you an official New York actor. But I found I found something. Um, and then before before we uh, we have to wrap it up, uh, I do have a great song that we we have to show at the end. But I found something that really thrilled me. I said, of course I can show her Law and Order clip. You know. Oh my God. But this really made me happy because my favorite television show was A Different World. And I remember oh, yes. when you were on it, and you guys, you <laughs> have to check this out. Mary Testa on A Different World. <laughs> you brought your own food. Good move. <laughs> Ooh, looks like somebody fell off the vino van. <laughs> well, ladies, what'll it be? I'd like a waffle sausage and a side order jelly donuts, please. One spinster special. God, so sexist. Do you have a man? Uh, make that two spinster specials. <laughs> well, I don't get it. A bunch of bachelorettes on a waffle binge at Irabelle's on date night? All men are swine. Oh, come on, girls. I feel like I'm at a basset hound convention. Listen, my grandmother Louisa always said, Every pot has its lid. Of course, she buried six husbands. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember doing yeah, that? Yeah, I do remember that because my friend wrote that episode or was one of the writers on that episode. And oh. I was in California for like three months and Debbie mm -hmm. Allen directed that episode. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, but it's a funny story. I was supposed to come up to the table Mm -hmm. And, you know, start the scene. And there were all these girls that were extras on the set and they wouldn't let me through. So I had what? to kind of push, <laughs> You're push like, my way through. You don't see that. But I had it, to kind of push my way through to get to the table because I had a scene to do. It's like, hello, <laughs> I got the lines, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was trying to be on camera. <laughs> see? Oh, that's hysterical. And that show was yes, like one of the, the top rated shows. So they were like, I'm going to be you know, seen on exactly. a different world. I'm getting my face on television. <laughs> Who's this old white woman? I wasn't that old then, though. <laughs> but I was older than them. <laughs> you know, that's okay. You got the perm going, so you could have been a light-skinned sister. No, honey, this is not a perm. Oh, that's, of course. It, it's not a perm. Of course, that's natural. I should know that. It's natural. That's natural. You should know that. <laughs> That was a little, that was a slight bit of shade, Lance. I, you got the perm going for no, 45 years. No, that was, <laughs> no, that was me calling curly hair a perm, not like the actual, you know, uh, what do you call the, 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 whatever they put in the hair to make it curly. I was calling like, 
the fact that it was curly, natural. I was a calling perm. that a perm, you know. Yeah, but no, I, I guess no. the term That's perm the also. You're not gotten out of anytime soon. No, <laughs> not anytime. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I'm digging. I'm digging. <laughs> I'm digging. <laughs> I'm digging. <laughs> I have to say something um, nice about you, Lance. What? Um, there's many things nice to say about you, but Thank you're the you. one who taught me to save your $5 bills. Yes. I've always remembered that. I have a big thing of $5 bills in my kitchen. Anytime you spend money and you have a $5 bill, put it in a jar, put it in a box, save your $5 bills. And it's we're in the season because I typically do it between Memorial Day and Labor Day. And yep. that's in, and so one year, I think we checked in with each other. Cause I remember one year I was able to sell, say $500 in $5 yeah. bills. It really adds up. It's amazing. And it becomes like, you become obsessed. You, you get like, you want to break a 20 just to see if you're going to get a $5. Exactly. Yeah. But it's so great because you're saving money without too much effort. Without, it's almost none at all. It's just, it's, well, thank you for reminding me. And yeah. I love like sharing that with yeah, and people. And your viewers, your viewers will all know that now. Now they can, I, I hope everyone does that. And we would love to hear like if you, you know, by Labor Day, if you've done it by then, we will be in the new version of the show. Hopefully we'll be in person Ooh. so we can get our Broadway stars um, at the actual theater where they made their Broadway debut. That's the, wow. our goal. You know, it's like uh, now that we're coming out of the pandemic. So um, hopefully uh, by Labor Day, people will be telling us that they've saved $500. That would be. Exactly. Yeah, I would I would love it. I would love it. Um, as we, we wrap up, and I, I do have this great song, I just wanted to ask you, though, of, of the shows that you've done on Broadway, even off-Broadway, um, you know, when time goes by, sometimes you go, okay, that was fun doing that character, but now I have this, and especially after doing the, you know, we've gone through a pandemic and, you know, so much loss, but also time for self-reflection. And I think it's a great time as artists to like say, oh, I can't wait to dig in and tell this person's yeah. story. What kind of stories do you think you want to tell now after this pandemic, like uh, as we get back to work? Well, you know, I don't have a particular story in mind, but I mm -hmm. do want to collaborate with people that I really want to work with. And I am a big fan of the new, the new musical. I mean, I've mm -hmm. done my fair share of revivals, obviously, right. but... I really enjoy working on new stuff, whether it's off Broadway, off off Broadway or Broadway. And so I think just something that challenges me and makes me find different parts of myself that mm. it resonates with. That's what I'm interested in doing. I'm not interested in this sounds really snotty, but uh, commercial theater is wonderful and, and it feeds the masses. But commercial theater for the most part tends to be a little bit more conciliatory mm. and I like things that are a little more difficult and uh, and not so tied up so uh, I'm hoping that I get to do stuff like that in the future you know who knows yeah uh, I hope that I do have stuff coming up and I hope I work again and yes. you yes. know uh, that's all I could say and yeah just the older you get, the more you know yourself and you the more you know what interests you and what doesn't interest you. And so it's kind of like floating on a river. You know, you just let that your boat go. And you, you let, see where let you your go boat go. Yeah. It's, it's, you know. it's great. So of the shows that you have done, is there a role that you would like to revisit? Like whether it's in Marilyn the Musical where you were Hedda Hopper, which I saw twice. Um, you did? Oh <laughs> yeah, my God. I did. You know, <laughs> and I mean, there's like on the town, there's uh, the rink. Oh my goodness. There was the rink um, that you got to do with Cheetah Rivera, uh, yeah. Guys and Dolls, I said, 42nd Street. Uh, even Queen of the Mist, are there any of these roles that you would love to like revisit? Queen of the Mist is, is the most extraordinary piece for me because Michael John wrote it for me. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is a character that my soul is very familiar with in a way. And in I what way? Mind doing, what yeah, way? I would, huh? In what, what way are you familiar? You know, she's an underdog and she's misunderstood and she's hmm. difficult. And um, she's a brilliant woman in 1901 that nobody listens to, died a pauper, nobody cared yeah. about her. And so, you know, it's like an underdog, which I always find way more interesting. And also, um, 
I, I want to say this too. So Queen of the Mist is, oh, will always have a special place in my heart, always. But I also would like to see them cast in a way that um, that doesn't delineate, okay, this, and I've said this a million times, this person's a leading person and this person's a character person. I would like to see people understand that everyone has experiences of love and, oh. and loss and and pain and and I would like to see character people play the leading roles, you know, I really would for myself and for every character actor I know. Because, you know, uh, characters, character actors and the parts are always uh, fun, but they never get to carry a show, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're just like come in and they sort of support. And mm -hmm. I just think um, now that we've been through a pandemic and focus is different, I'm hoping that like, just like um, Black Lives Matter and Asian Lives Matter and everybody should have a seat at the table, I'm hoping they mix it up a little bit more because I think for me, it's like foreign films. It's way more interesting to me to watch yeah. people that look real um, have like carry shows. Absolutely. So that's, have an that's arc. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I totally will. I, that's I hope closing words. <laughs> well, I hope the people who are writing, the young people are writing, the old people who are writing, you know, hear this um, because it is very, very, um, I, th I think, um, uh, smart, I think, to uh, portray characters that look like the world rather yeah. than sort of an idealized version of the world. Um, and I think television is definitely getting that way. Uh, it is. And television is starting to do like use more and more women to direct, which I really love and yes. more women to write. And, you know, uh, that would be, you know, all the groups that have gotten the shaft. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see everybody get their piece of the pie. Absolutely. You know? It makes our lives interest, uh, interesting when we're watching and hearing these stories because exactly. we see ourselves and you go, OK, I can do that because that's me. That's right. That's right. You know, and it also takes a little bit of um, pain away when somebody mm. sees a character on stage go through something that they've been through and they don't feel like alone and they don't feel like an idiot. You know, they're like, oh, I can I can cry about this or laugh about this because they're doing it on stage. But I feel this in my soul. So, you mm -hmm. know, um, it's all good. Oh my goodness! See, this is why I love me some Mary Testa. You know, <laughs> this is this should be the TED Talk. You know, so you get up there <laughs> and make sure that the people who are creating hear this. It's so so important. Well, there's a song that you sang in the Lincoln Center production of the New Brain that uh, William Finn wrote, uh -huh. and uh, I think it is it's sort of like the perfect thing. Uh, for right now, and it's sort of perfect uh, leading from what you said. Um, but before we get to that and we wrap up our time, it is your birthday weekend, and yes. I told you I wanted to celebrate you, and oh. and I would love if people just write happy birthday, Mary, in the chat. Oh, that's very um, sweet. I think that would be wonderful and exciting. Um, and then I will just sing, this is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Hey! Okay. Yes! <laughs> Thank you so much. I had a lovely birthday because so many people reached, you know, that's the wonderful thing about Facebook. Facebook is good for birthdays. Because Absolutely. You hear from a million different people and it's just lovely to be sort of buoyed up by, you know, people thinking of you. So it was a lovely day. Thank you oh. very much. Well, I'm glad you had a wonderful day. And now the birthday greetings are coming in. Ooh, and you. did you see Richard Bennett, who used thank to be Richard... Gloria. Gervais in, do you remember Richard from um, Barnum? Uh, yes. Yeah, that was, that's Richard, he lives in Chicago now. What, Richard Bennett? Yes. Get out of here. From Barnum. Oh my God, hi, I, look at that beard. I know, he has a long beard, and if you ever follow him, he's a great blues guitarist um, also. Um, he's he's really, <laughs> he's so fantastic. Uh, when I was on tour in Chicago, I actually got to meet with him for about uh, an hour. We had lunch, and it was great to see him again, uh, because that was like very exciting for me. Rose Taylor says, happy birthday, thank you, Mary. Rose. Uh, Julie Yolis, happy birthday. You. 
Andrew Good, happy Susan Spector, happy birthday. Arnold Manjoli, great you. casting director, happy birthday. Thank you, Arnold. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I love this. I Thank love you, this. Susan. So exciting, Thank Barbara, Barbara. Wilman. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Gloria, oh, sure. You, you guys, thank you That's for so all nice. of these uh, wonderful bir birthday greetings for Mary Testa. And thank um, I really, I am going to show this great song uh, before we leave. Uh, but I really want to thank you all for joining us on this <laughs> warm, warm day. Uh, but it's lovely. And thank you, Julie and Andrea, for sharing Pepper and Jax and for Clyde. For, uh, Clyde letting... doesn't like paparazzi, so no. I couldn't show him. No, Clyde is not going to do that, uh, but we do have a picture. We got a picture earlier of Clyde that we'll show on the website. Um, you guys, if you go to broadwayscallingtv.com, we do have a picture of Clyde. Uh, but thank you, oh. Clyde, for letting us have uh, your your mama Mary mommy. Uh, yes, for, your mommy. for this hour. <laughs> <laughs> But the song that I wanted to share with everyone uh, before uh, we leave you, uh, it's a song called Change. Oh, and yes. um, I don't know if you want to give any background on the song before we show it and say this goodbye. This character is a homeless woman who sells books she finds and they turn out to be the lead characters. Basically, it's Bill Finn's story um, mm -hmm. because he did have a brain, sort of a brain aneurysm and surgery and all of that stuff. So. Um, she's just this homeless woman. It's a great song about about change, about mm. not ju not just change. Actually, do I have two seconds to tell the story? Yes. I used to enter from the back of the house, and I would come down the audience, and I would beg people for change. And people thought I was a real homeless woman. And <sighs> I got very hostile looks. Sometimes I made some money. And at the end of the run, which was your typical you know, um, off-Broadway run at Lincoln mm -hmm. Center, I made $56. Wow. In change. And I donated it to a homeless organization. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love mm -hmm. it. See, it's, it's like great things are happening everywhere, you know, and it's like, but change is very important. And like you were saying, totally. you wanted to see change in the things that are created, you know, where character people yeah. are really, uh, you know, leading the story. Well, this is a fantastic song. A fan, another fantastic performance by Mary Testa. Thank and you so uh, much. if you see her name, I hope you go see her in the fall, wherever she is, because she said she'll work anywhere, Broadway, off Broadway, <laughs> off off Broadway. That's right. That's so right. We're gonna. Right. We're Thank gonna... you so much, Lance, for having me on your show, your wonderful show. I appreciate you asking me, and it's oh, an honor. Absolutely. I've been waiting to have you on for so long, and this is so exciting. And to all of you, um, uh, stay safe, stay sane, keep a little Broadway in life. And I'm Lance Roberts, and this is my guest, the birthday girl, Mary Testa. As Bye, always, everybody. Thank peace. You. Chill. <laughs> Thank you.